Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a seaside hammock. It's going to be a really fun, relaxing video today, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully I won't fall asleep. Mark won't fall asleep while we're painting. <laughs> got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's been in chat during live show, so if you've got questions, you can ask those while I'm painting, and I'll try to answer them. Uh, let's get started. Alrighty, so here's my reference photo. It's from Shutterstock. Really loved it. Um, it actually was a little bit longer. It went down uh, like a square. So if you want to do this on a square canvas, you could extend it down and just kind of uh, extend your water down. But I decided to kind of crop it a little bit shorter to make it easier to see on camera. For some reason, those <laughs> square canvases are sometimes hard to <laughs> fit. All right, I'm using a 9 by 12 inch Pro Linen, Belgian Linen uh, canvas board by Fredericks. They're a canvas sponsor, so thank you to them. It's a hardcore board and archival, so it's not going to warp or bend or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> go over our brushes really quick. We've just got a few brushes that we'll be working with. Uh, number 12 Bright for just some of the basing and some of the background colors. And then a couple of filberts for some of the water sections. So this is number four and number six filbert. And then I've got number two round that we'll be using in the tree. And some for some of the finer details. These ones are the 6100 series from Princeton. And then I've got a few of their Velvet Touch line. Uh, quarter inch, three eighths inch angle shaders and uh, the number eight filbert. These two brushes are two of my go-to brushes. So I use them in almost every video. And then I've got a couple of Willis blenders for some of the um, mountain areas, some of the grasses, uh, foliage. These are the quarter inch and three eighths inch Willis blender. Um, really any kind of scruffy brush will do. And then I've got a number uh, three eighths inch uh, Deerfoot stippler for some of the clouds. And we'll probably use the Willis blenders in the clouds as well. And that's about it. So let me go over our colors really quick and then we'll start to show you how to draw it. All right, I've got uh, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red light, cadmium yellow medium, yellow oxide, phthalo green yellow shade, uh, cobalt teal, phthalo blue green shade, our cat's knocking at the door, ultramarine blue, doxazine purple, burnt sienna, burnt umber, carbon black. This one is uh, unbleached titanium and titanium white and zinc white. Uh, that The zinc white's mostly for the clouds. Uh, it'll be good for... Um, I'm just noticing that my watercolor pencil is leaving a little blue marks all along here where I touched it in the water. I'm going to get those off. <laughs> Our cat is knocking at the door. Yeah, we need to get Spencer on cat duty. Babysitting duty. Cat sitting duty. Ever since our dog died this October, cat seems to want to be in the studio with us. Like she's like got nervous or something. Anyhow. All right, so our uh, shoreline is going to be just right up below the third mark. So if you kind of figure out where your third is, this upper third, and it's pretty much just like a finger's width below that upper third there, I'm going to use a T-square so that I get a perfectly straight line. And put my... Ooh, it was watered down, so I've got a little bit of water on there. That's a good that's a good uh, thing to know too for y'all. If you get it water a little bit of water on your watercolor pencil, it'll be darker for you. And then um, we're gonna leave about an inch here and then go diagonal and then the water line down here is right about the third mark. And so we're wanting to leave about an inch right here above it. Uh, for the shoreline and just kind of do a sort of wiggly line up to this mark here. And then this line is going to come across right there for our lower water line. I think this is maybe just an inlet or they may have digitally altered the photo. I don't know. Um, to add the water down here, but we'll just pretend it's like an inflow. And then our tree is going to go over here in this section, right over here. So we're going to paint all this behind it. So I'm not going to draw in the tree quite yet, but I will put in our mountains here. So we're going to start up here, maybe about an inch and a half above here. We're going to kind of angle it and bring it down and then come back up. 
and about just past the halfway mark, we're going to have this little really low dip right here. And then it's going to come up, round out, come back down, not as low as here. And then angle up this way. You really could put any mountains you wanted up here. This is purely, I'm just painting, drawing what's on in the drawing, but actually I'm realizing I went way too high on that. <clears throat> but mountains are kind of fun because you can kind of make them your own and do whatever you really want to with them. And then these two little ones back here, a little bit lower, and they're going to kind of be right in there. All right, and then our clouds are going to be all up in here, and they're just going to kind of meander and kind of go straight across down here low. And as they get towards the horizon line, they're going to be smaller. So these ones up here are going to be quite large, take up most of the sky up here. And then these you're seeing some little ones down here close to the horizon line. But we don't have to draw those all in. All right, so that's our basic drawing for now. We'll draw our hammock and everything in later, but this will give us some guidelines for putting in our basics. Hopefully you could see that. I don't know. Okay, real quick. Yes. About what level difficulty do we think this will be? Um, I think this is going to be a mid-level, kind of mid to... I'm going to try to keep it easy. I, I don't think that it, the drawing's not particularly hard. Um, yeah, I don't think it's going to be that bad. Some people have trouble with trees is all. So, you know, if you have trouble with trees, then you might struggle with this one. But I'm going to try to hopefully go step by step through it all and make it easier. I um, if if you were looking at my paint list on on uh, before the show, I did have manganese blue down there and I probably still do during the live show. But I decided to take it off the list because it wasn't quite right for the I thought it might be good for the sky, but it's not it wasn't quite right after we hunted for it. Well, and we'll find, yeah, I know, I looked and looked for it. Um, I'll find another use for manganese. I've used it once before on the teacup video that we did a couple of years ago. And then somebody asked, could they use cerulean blue? Yeah, cerulean would be nice. Only, Some... af only after they paid for it, though. <laughs> that, that was that was my two cents. <laughs> wait, till, wait till you pay for it and then use it. Right, yeah. That's probably good advice. All right, so I'm making a just a medium blue with ultramarine and phthalo blue together, fairly equal parts. I'm going to put that up here in the sky. And if you want to gray it out a little bit, you could add a little bit of burnt sienna or burnt umber or something like that. I added a little bit of white here to... it down. It's going to get a little bit more white-ish when it gets closer to the horizon line, so it's a good little trick to give it a little bit of distance. You do the darker color up in your upper part of your sky and then put a lighter color right at your horizon in your sky. It will instantly give it some depth. I'm sure there's a scientific reason for that, but I sure don't know what it is. I don't know what it is either, so I'm just going to say do, do it. It works. Okay, so I'm not going all the way up into the clouds yet, and um, if you notice, I'm kind of um, feathering out these edges so that I don't have to fight any hard, sharp lines when I do put my clouds in, so kind of um, just be aware of that when you're Putting this in, don't. I'm just using the kind of the corner of my brush to kind of feather out those edges as I'm putting in my horizon line blue here, kind of going around my mountains a little bit. And you could even paint your mount your mountains in after. You could do your blue, the whole blue, upper part blue, and then draw your mountains on top, and then paint those in if you don't want to have to paint around them. Kind of lost that mountain there, just a little. So I'm just going to kind of feather out that bottom edge there. Add 
a little bit more of the lighter blue up here. And all of that is pretty much covered up by the tree, but we're seeing a little bit of it through, so we still want to put that sky in, even though it's going to be behind the tree. Hope you all are having a good Saturday so far. Glad you're joining us today, if you're watching with us live. And if you're not, that's okay, too. We still hope you're enjoying <laughs> yourself. Yeah, exactly. To watching the videos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to grab some of the teal now. And teal, if you don't have it, is just thalo blue and thalo green mixed together in equal parts with a little bit of white. Cobalt teal, I think, is made with cobalt blue instead of uh, thalo blue, but they're similar enough. Um, I think I'm going to make add a little bit more green. I'm just trying to make that kind of watercolor, which is sort of a turquoisey green blue. I think that'll do. Yeah, that's pretty. So I didn't really wash the color, the sky color, out of my brush at all. I'm just... And this actually does not have to be perfectly straight since this is kind of a cove. And uh, I noticed it looked like, like on this side that maybe it was coming down a little bit. So it might be um, like this part needs to be straight but because it's uh, far enough away that, you know, if your water is far enough away and you're at the right angle, it's going to look completely straight. So it's really important to do. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make it straight just because it. I think it'll look better to the eye. You might. And I'm going to grab some unbleached titanium. A little bit more white here. But I just noticed in our picture that it looked like it was kind of dropping down closer here. And it may just be the way the photograph was taken. But in general, it's a good reel to just make your horizon line on your water straight. Okay, I'll bring that down. And these colors aren't going to be exactly right. We're going to add other colors to it, but we're getting kind of close to our base colors here. Back here, going to be darker. Okay, and then let's just use all of these colors down in here. And we'll fill in this bottom area here. About halfway up, it starts to change to the sand color. So we're going to just do kind of this bottom section with the blues and then. We'll be adding lots of other colors to this, so it doesn't have to be perfect right now. We're just trying to get some color down. Just get the canvas covered. I'm grabbing that unbleached titanium. That's going to be kind of our sand color. It's mixing with my blues here. Put a layer of that down. And over here is going to be all our tree color, but I'm going to just put the blue in first, and then when we paint our tree in, I'll put the tree color in the water. That way it'll be exactly the same color, and I don't have to try to match it up later. Um, all right, that's good. I'm going to clean my brush out so that I have clean sand color. I don't want it to be blue. Grab that color. I'm gonna. That's the unbleached titanium. Unbleached titanium you can kind of mix with yellow oxide, add it to your white. It's just and maybe a little bit of brown, burnt umber or something. Um, add just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of brighter cadmium yellow because it's kind of a yellow, a little bit more of a brighter yellow tone. Okay, that's good. So there's our sand color. That's pretty. 
I'm going to paint this all along here. And I'm going to go ahead and overlap my water just a little bit, but I'm going to kind of try to feather it out so that it kind of blends with it just a little bit, or at least kind of just barely overlaps it. Kind of doing these side to side sweeping motion. And we'll fix that later. Grab some of that darker unbleached titanium. Kind of maybe a little bit of the yellow oxide. There we go. And while that sand's wet, while that sand color's wet, just kind of do this quickly and just kind of brush some of this color down into that sand so that it sort of fades out into the water line there. We will be overlapping this, so it does not have to look great right now. Just trying to get some color down. We'll be covering a lot of this later. Or adding to it. Yeah, that'd be a perfect place to set up each chair. <coughs> and just relax. Shut up. Mark is taunting me. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Yeah, okay. Good, thank you. Just appreciate you for pointing that out. <laughs> Such a brat. I swear. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. Have you seen my row houses? <laughs> <laughs> Not <Enough> said. <laughs> Mark's teasing me because I tried to paint, I tried to simplify beach chairs. Like, you know, one of my umbrella beach video and they I don't think they were functional when I finished with them. So Yeah, we got a call from OSHA. <laughs> <laughs> they were concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Mark likes to remind me anytime I paint a beach scene, he likes to remind me of that video. Okay, so you can see how the the water here is very similar to that sand color. I just added a tiniest bit of blue to it. Um, and I'm going to go back in here while it's wet and just kind of do some lines here in it. But that's that's about all we can we're going to need. Okay. Looks good. Okay. So let's work on our clouds. Clean that out. Oop, spilling water everywhere. And I'm going to grab, let's go ahead and, well, let's start with the Deerfoot Stippler and we'll see how it goes. I'm going to mix up some more of my white since I don't have any more of that left over, or more of my blue that I was using for my sky color here. So phthalo blue, ultramarine, mixed together. And then some white. There we go. So when you do your sky, you can just mix up a little bit extra. If you don't wanna to have to try to match it later, it's fine. And it does have to match exactly. Okay, so I'm going to use the Deerfoot Stippler. I'm going to use the Zinc White and the Titanium White. I'm going to start with the Titanium White since that is... There we've got some open spots here. So I'm just going to use that to kind of fill in this open areas here. And fluff out those edges so they're soft. Thank you. 
and really if you want to keep it simple you could just use this brush and um, or you know any kind of stiff bristled brush and um, just kind of do a few little simple clouds by dry brushing them in and uh, call it good so that would be the beginner version of clouds you know so if you don't want to have to get too fancy with them if clouds kind of intimidate you or you feel like they kind of turn into big blobs which they can if you don't keep the edges soft so that that's the key thing with um, clouds is you want to keep everything very soft and blendy um, so I'm just going to build up my colors very slowly so that I don't have kind of an overwhelming um, an overwhelming buildup of one color just solid you know you kind of want everything to kind of one color to sort of fade into the next so I'm adding a little bit of this blue this was the light blue kind of close to the horizon color and I'm gonna put this at the bottom of some of these clouds I think I want to start to switch over to a smaller brush now so I can get a little bit more detail. Hey, while you're doing that, uh -huh. can you recommend a alternate color from Thalo Green Yellow Shade? Um, Thalo Green Blue Shade would work if you added a little bit of yellow to it. Um, they're similar. Um, you could just use Thalo Blue and add yellow to it to get a Thalo Green or something close to it. Um, I have a color mixing video that I did in my Thankful Art group. I think it was Thankful Art. Was it Thankful Art? No, it might have been my Art Taking Flight. I can't remember. But anyhow, I have a... Um, it's on Patreon. If you scroll down, you can see the results, at least the sheet that I did with the color mixing. And I showed what colors, what main colors to buy. Um, so quinacridone, with Quinacridone Magenta... A cadmium yellow, quinacridone, cadmium red meat, light yellow, uh, cadmium yellow, and then thalo blue, and burnt sienna, and black and white. You can mix pretty much all the rest of these colors or something similar. So, all right, I'm gonna grab the zinc white now. This is a transparent white, it works really well in clouds. And it'll help give us that kind of soft and fluffy look we're going for, not over blended or not, you know, not too solid. So. And is that the Willow's Blender? This is the Willow's Blender. I'm using the quarter inch now. And I'm just going to slowly build up. And where I want more solid white, I'm just going to use more paint. Kind of lay it down a little bit more thickly. But that blue from underneath is still going to show through since this is a transparent white. So it'll already kind of give me that soft look that I'm going for with my clouds. So it works really well. And then anywhere where it doesn't look like it's blending enough, you can grab some of your blue from your sky. And just kind of add that to the bottom or if you need a shadow somewhere. See that and then if we need a really bright pop of white and some of the tops or the middles of these clouds are very bright we can add our titanium white so it's just kind of a mixture of those three our background blue sky blue and you know some clouds have gray in them these clouds are very like bright they're not super they're not a lot of gray in them I might add a little bit of gray here in a minute but for the most part, they're pretty blue. I don't know why I'm putting clouds over there. I don't even see any in the picture. <sighs> so weird. But it's okay. There can be clouds in That's your world. True. That's true. There could be. But nope, they're gone. No. No clouds for you. No clouds. Well, just because the, the branches are coming down here, I want that contrast there. So... All right, let's go a little bit brighter, darker blue right here. So this blue is gonna be close to the blue up in the top. 
there, this shadow color right here. And then I'm going to grab some zinc white while that's wet, while that blue is still wet, and blend that zinc white over that edge, pull that color up, and soften that line. I'm going to wipe my brush off, grab some more zinc white. I mean, if they took the photo like two minutes later, there'd be clouds there. Okay. <laughs> you want to put the clouds back? Is it bothering you? No. Nope. Okay. I'm just being silly. <laughs> okay, you guys seem very worried about those poor clouds there. Those I took away. Well, I mean, they were there. They were stars. It was like their big internet debut. And then... <laughs> gone. gone. Erased from existence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Marky... Using some white here, and add another. It kind of cuts off this end of this cloud here. I don't know, putting clouds back in there. Okay. Most of this is going to be mostly covered up, so, or at least you know, kind of behind stuff, so you're not gonna see like really vivid detail on a lot of this. This this over here though I do want to pay special attention to so I'm gonna grab some more of that white zinc white here and pull out some edges of this cloud out here. Create a soft blended edge. really easy to do with these kind of scruffy brushes you just kind of tap it in and if you you know if it, it doesn't blend enough for you or it looks you know kind of weird then you can pull out your sky color and just add a little bit of that so that they kind of blend together I'm gonna grab some white kind of help this transition between the zinc white and the brighter clouds there I think I will add a little bit of gray. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of burnt umber to my blue. That'll gray it out a little bit. And I'll use that with the let's use titanium white. There we go. It's going to look very dark against these clouds there. And you can set that in, and then I'm going to wipe my brush off. And I'm going to grab a pretty good amount of zinc white here. And I'm just going to blend over the top. Push that back, blend it in into what we've got going on already. Same thing over here. And I'm really kind of just doing like little circular motions here to create that random look in the clouds. Sort of fluffiness. Grabbing the titanium white so I have some little bright pops of white in here. So laying down some really thick white here. Gotta go 
question. Mm -hmm. What would be your biggest tip for doing clouds? My biggest tip is to go slowly. Go slowly, lay them down slowly in um, layer upon layer. Don't try to do them all in one, you know. This is kind of wet down here. Um, they're going to, it's going to take a while to build up the layers. They're going to look worse than before they look better. Clouds are very like, I don't know. They, they just, they always seem to look really weird, 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 weird. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, that works, you know? So, um, I mean, unless you're just doing the kind of the simplified clouds, I think that the dry brush, you know, very simplified clouds can go on fairly quickly, you know, with just the white and the blue sky and letting some of that blue show through. But there again, you have to, um, you know, be kind of reserved with how much paint you use, you know, very little paint on your brush when you're doing that um, so that you don't have really thick edges. The fluffier, the softer, the better with clouds. Because if you, I don't know. And th I think that that's what um, throw, uh, can be the more difficult with um Beginners of paint, painters, especially if you're not used to, uh, you know, layering like that, it, you can kind of get frustrated and think you're not doing it right. When you are, you're just not quite done yet. You know, you just have to keep adding more layers. So. And every now and then I think it's good to stop and just kind of look at it from a distance. So um, I have mine up on the monitor and every now and then when I, as I'm working, I'll stop and look and just see what it looks like from a distance. And so if you're painting, you know, you don't, obviously are not going to be filming yourself probably. Um, so what, what I would do is just kind of stop and kind of stand up and walk away and then turn around and look at it from far away. And then um, you can usually see things that you miss when you're just sitting right here and looking at, right at it, you know. Um, so. So when you stop and look at it, do you like, turn around suddenly <laughs> or do you just kind of glance like sneak over up your, on it like, glance over your shoulder <laughs> like like you're not really looking at it but you're you know just like hmm. trying to catch it off guard right well it's yeah in its natural state exactly that's that's the key I'm, okay you <laughs> i can see you just walk along suddenly snap around <laughs> Zoolander. Blue steel. Blue steel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it now. I know what you're saying. All right. So we're getting close here, I think. This side is going to be mostly covered, so I'm not going to be as worried about this end of the cloud. Clouds is the other side, but I do want them to look good kind of going in. I'm adding white now, just kind of brighter highlights over the top of the zinc white that I'd already put in, just to really reinforce some of the bright areas of those clouds. And really the, I don't really have to add the dark down in here because this is all kind of pretty, pretty, um, pretty good already, I think. And if you needed to, you could grab some of that gray or some of that blue that we have mixed up and add that back in, you know. While your white's wet is the best way of doing it, and that way it kind of blends, makes them even softer. Get a little bit of that really dark blue here. Just a little bit of it down in here. Grab that zinc white.
getting really close here. And this is that zinc white a little bit. Just add that back in. Just want to get a soft transition between that those two colors. So right now it's very harsh right there. So just need to keep working at it. And the tendency would be to just wipe it all out with white. Like think, you know, that that um, just come in with a really heavy amount of white and go back over it and then you just end up with like gobs and gobs and gobs of paint on your on your canvas so but we can get it worked out within a couple of layers here with the zinc white It'd be a lot softer than if we went in with straight titanium white and just tried to kind of tone it down the zinc white is a lot more subtle and if you don't have zinc white, you can still do this. You could use glazing liquid or you could um, use some water with your regular white. It won't have the same exact look because the transparent white is just a lot easier to use for this kind of thing. But it's still, you can still get something similar. All right, I'm going to use the titanium white now. And I'm going to go in and just touch off the tops of some of these cloud shapes in here. I think we're pretty close. Okay, people are saying that they're seeing purple in the clouds. Yeah, I'm seeing a little bit of yellow, too. I'm going to use a little bit of the no, yellow like, from the sand. Like, actually on your painting. Oh, on my painting? And I kind of um, see it, too. Yeah, I kind of do, too. Yeah, there's some purple. Well, it's probably from the ultramarine blue, because the ultramarine blue, when you add white to it, it turns purple-ish. So. Oh, okay. I'm going to use a little bit of the white from the sea down there. It's in the sand. Just a little touch of yellow. And really, mostly clouds are not pure white, so N none of this has been, uh, you know, there's very few areas of this that have not been touched by other colors. You know, there's a lot of blue, even in my pure white areas, there's a lot of blues and stuff, so you're not, you're not going to generally go in and just use white. Usually clouds have a lot of other colors going on in there. So now that I've got my white areas down, I'm going to tint them with those other colors. So I'm putting, bringing in some yellows and things that to warm it up since there's so much yellow down in here. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that, I think. I, st I still might mess with that a little bit. I don't know. 100% happy, so I'm going to, it may be drying, so I may not be able to do too much with it right now. Okay, there we go. A little bit more zinc white just over the edge right there where it was not quite blended in. All right, I'm going to call that good enough. Let's right, keep well, on working. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> oh, darn it. No video games yet, huh? Okay. I was watching a video on YouTube about, uh -huh. and for some reason they were doing hammocks, and I forget which video it was. Uh -huh. But anyways, they're saying that uh, you're not supposed to lay in a hammock end to end. Really? You're supposed to Just lay it in sideways like a swing? Almost sideways. Almost like, like 60, 70 degrees at an angle. And then it just like spreads out and just supports you almost Interesting. perfectly. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that's probably why I've been doing it wrong because I usually flip over out out of it as soon mm -hmm. as I lay down in it. Or you get in it and you feel like you're being rolled up into a you know burrito. Burrito. <laughs> All right, I'm using the same brush, and I mixed up some teal with uh, thalo blue and uh, thalo green in equal parts. And I'm really, I haven't, you can tone it down if you need to, but it, I really don't think it needs to be toned down too much here. 
Well, thank you for that lesson in proper... Safety first. Proper hammock usage. I really have always wished that we had a hammock here at the house. Mm -hmm. I'll set one up in here for you. (laughs) Might be hard to reach the pallet if I was laying in my hammock all the time. (laughs) Start a new craze, hammock painting. Hammock painting, hey. I'll try it. Well, there's some of our viewers that actually live in places like this. It's really... I know we have several from Hawaii and Haiti and different areas that... And we might be slightly envious. Slightly. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's beachfront hammock. (laughs) Okay, there there we go. Good, good. Good philosophy of life there, honey. Thanks. Going with a little bit of the yellow oxide added to this color here. This phthalo green, phthalo blue. I'm going to add a little bit more of the blue there. There we go. And right in here, there's kind of a wave, so I'm just going to kind of put almost a straight line. It's going to kind of dip right here, go straight across, then angle upwards. And there's a couple more down here lower, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of roll in those colors on the, they're just shadows on there, on the waves. If we get too much of it, Add more white. Get that color that was kind of our watercolor. And not by watercolor, but the watercolor, not watercolor painting. Um, And just kind of fuzz out that edge there. Over the top of the sand a little bit. Grab some white. go a little bit lighter as it touches the sand and it these two should almost kind of merge so they're not they're not very like it's not an obvious line there they're almost kind of one color merging into the other because that what though what's happening is that water is getting so thin that you're seeing the sand underneath so you're seeing that there it's kind of merging from the sand color to the water color. So we're just wanting to get really close to those colors on either end. A little bit more of the light green, a little bit more of the sand color until we have an area that kind of just disappears into one another right there. And there is a little bit of that dark, so I'm leaving that little bit of that dark um, yellow oxide down there. I'll probably end up a little bit adding a little bit even darker color but right now we're just kind of trying to merge these two areas and if you want to you could even add zinc white here. That transparent white would help that transition too. But This is doing okay for me so I don't think I need it. But I am going to add a little bit of white just right here and I'm just going to tap my brush a little kind of fuzzy line where that wave is. And putting the white just above where that shadow is. Some places the shadow is kind of above it, but most of this, most of these that shadow is kind of below our white line. And then over here, just kind of blend it out. Okay, there's a little wave. And having that white, having that shadow underneath that white line makes it look like that wave's rolling over onto. 
going to dry brush a little bit of this color back here. Very, very light touches. Can grab a little bit more of the blue, mix that in with that green color right in here. Very close to the shoreline, there's a couple of low waves. Right there, and then we can use this color. Of underneath our wave back here if we need to. And just a couple places back in here just to add a little bit of zinc white go over the top with zinc white and I'm gonna tap it through kind of pull down a little bit so that it looks like that might be rolling a little bit That very light green. Right in between those two waves. And right down in here low. Got a little bit of white, add a little bit of white to that color. There we go. Right back in here, there's another little section of wave. That's good. Yeah. All right. So let's grab a little bit of the burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt umber. And I still have these blues and things in my brush, so it's kind of mixing. I'm going to just tap it just a little bit right along, very sparingly, right along my line of sh of she sea where the water is meeting the shore here and there's a few lines of it I'm just gonna go all the way along my water and do this kind of horizontal lines I'm gonna follow the water line and just tap in these irregular Very small little lines. Don't want a solid straight line. Okay, 
Okay. All right, and then I'm going to grab that sand color if I still have some. Mix that with my color that I've got on my brush here, and I'm just going to tap it right along the edge here. I'll blend it in a little bit. I don't have to go over the top of it necessarily, but maybe just right underneath it. Just transition between the two colors. Really that's the key with most of this kind of, really any of your paintings, at least the way I like to do them, is just really uh, pay attention to your transition between colors. You know, sometimes you're going to have sharp edges, but a lot of times you're going to have softer, you know, soft transitions between one color to another. So we'll lay down the dark color, but then we're going to kind of do the transition between that bright, bright color and the dark color. Because even in your shadows, you're going to have kind of that mid-range color that's right in between there we go okay so let's use this color this darker color I'm going to use a little bit add a little bit of the blue to it it's a shadow blue helps with the shadow colors um, and I'm going to create my tree shapes in here in my sand I'm just going to tap in kind of under where my hammock's going to be sand and go all the way over here. It's going to look really weird right now, but we'll get it there. Trust me. I'm going to put in some straight like branches. Some lines that look like branches in the sand. Let's add a little bit of zinc white to that color and I'm going to use it in my water right here. I'm just going to zigzag it through my water, holding the brush so that the point is pointing up and I'm just going back and forth. And then let's use some of that sand color. shadows just a little bit soften them up they're not going to be hard shadows they're on sand so you know your shadows will take on the look of the you know whatever they're projected onto a lot of times so you're not going to and depending on how far away your object is from from the ground where your shadow is, your going to be more blurry the farther away it is. So the tree is up high, so our shadows are going to be quite blurry. If it was, you know, right down near the tree trunk, you might have a more solid line in the sand, but since we're reflecting up these branches on the sand. It's going to be very soft and kind of blurry. Okay, there we go. Um, and we may 
We may need to go back in and add more to it later. I'm going to add a little bit right now, just a couple spots. That's good. And then let's add some of this color just over here in our water. This shadow color. Because the tree is coming up over, so we're seeing some of this the shadow of the tree down here too. Okay, good. Let's work on our mountains while this dries. And I'm still not 100% happy with the sand yet, so we're gonna add a little bit more to it. In fact, actually, let's do that wall. It's before we get too much farther away from it. Grab some burnt sienna or burnt umber and some of the titanium white. And I'm just gonna kinda tap in a little bit on my sand. Just a little Marks, I'm going to grab the white. And add some brighter white spots to my sand. Okay, we got a question unrelated to painting. Okay. They want to know where Mark is taking you for Valentine's. <laughs> I don't know. Where is Mark? I already bought my Valentine's present, so. <laughs> You're welcome, Mark. It's I like the you easiest did. Valentine's ever. You're, <laughs> I appreciate what you got me this year. It's really good. I literally, How did the you least know? I could do. <laughs> <laughs> the internet is a wonderful thing. <laughs> One year, I I was like, you know, there's way too much time between, because my birthday's in March. I was like, there is way too much time between Christmas and my birthday. And like Mother's Day was like, I think, the next one. So there's like five months in between or something. I was like, let's so get all the gifts like in one end of the year. And then you have to go months and months and months before you get another gift. So I was like, I think that Labor Day should be a gift-giving holiday. So it was like, what, is it like September or something like that? Or maybe yeah. August? Yeah, September. Ex yeah. So when you, so I don't know. I remember I was just joking and complaining. So Mark actually printed out Labor Union paper and wrapped up a video for me and gave it to me on Labor Day. It was hilarious. <laughs> it's like the best. Labor Day. That was that was pretty awesome, honey. I, I didn't say. put up the Labor Day tree though. That was very clever. <laughs> I thought that was really good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I just mixed up some of the sand color here. And just going back and forth here with it. I don't want it to get super muddy, so just kind of trying to keep it soft looking. All right, that's good. And then I do want to go along that water line there just one more time and add some brighter bits of water. Just tap in some. Why these aren't like super crashing waves here, so we don't have to do that. But if you want to, you can make them bigger. It's up to you. This is kind of a quiet, gentle bay. Soft waves. Shh, you can almost hear it. There we go. So I think that is pretty good for the sand. I'm happy with that. I 
I'm going to use some of that lighter color that's got the little bit of the that green in it and just kind of add it right in here to my water down here. And these shapes are that we're seeing in the water down here are just little lines really. If you look closely, they're just lines and kind of zigzag. So if you did my wave video that we did recently, um, it was a similar concept. It's basically kind of these zigzaggy lines uh, of color that are overlapping one another and, uh, you know, interacting. So, and creating these kind of interesting shapes. So, we'll get to that here in a minute, but we can use a little bit of what these colors that we've got going on and just kind of, as we introduce a new color, just go ahead and add it in a couple places down here because we're going to end up with a bunch of colors that are all kind of interwoven. And so if we have, if we just use what we've got on our brush as we do this, we'll have less work to do later to fill this whole area in with these colors. So I'm just going to add the sand color down in here with these exact lines right now. Keep your shapes random, just and sometimes I'm just kind of dragging my brush and let it zigzag and create these lines, these long lingering lines that kind of and then other times that I'm I'm just gonna do these like shorter brush strokes that are but they're all kind of flat, like they're not wide very much, uh, except for the ones down here. But these ones that are farther away from us, the farther away we get, the straighter those lines are going to be, the thinner they're going to get. So that'll be a, a good trick to the eye if you can keep these ones back here thinner. And then you can thicken up these ones that are closer to us down here, and that'll give it that perspective of depth too. Okay, I think we're good for now. Not a whole lot. There we go. Our hammock's going to be somewhere in here, so we're going to have that hammock color too. Clean that brush out and let's fill in our mountain. I'm going to use the angle brush for that. How you doing, hon? I'm doing okay. How are you doing? Good. How many hours have we gone so far? Only one. One hour. Okay, good. We're doing good. Yes, I am. <laughs> Thank and, you. And you're doing all right, too. I'm doing all right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, and you use that sky color and just add a little bit of purple. It's a good trick for using doing mountains, just whatever your sky color is, add that color to your mountains. That immediately kind of pushes them back because your sky is going to um, get in between your eye and the mountains that are in the distance. And change the color called it's got a fancy name it's like atmospheric perspective or something like that but basically it just means that things look the color of the sky as they get farther away <laughs> so which is tends to be blue all right so putting in that mountain there I'm go a little bit darker just want a little bit darker than the sky color that's right above it. Just tapping it in so that it creates kind of a random pattern of colors. This side is up higher, so I'm going to go ahead and come up a little higher. 
There we go. Okay. And then let's go ahead and use this dark color down in here. I'm just going to use that edge of my brush to kind of draw my line in. Across the sky. This is basically this color with just a tiny bit of purple added to it. So it's and this side I'm going to add a little bit more white, just a little. So this is kind of our light side. This is going to be green, but I'm going to put this color on underneath so that it shows up through the green. I'm going to grab some purple and do really dark right here. I'm going to put a little bit of this really dark in this dark shadow side here. to kind of create little bush shapes. Point the tip down so that you get little random edges. And grabbing that lighter blue along my water line here. And if you want to, you can tape this or you can add your your uh, use your ruler to paint along this line to keep it straight. So basically just covering this with blue, just adding a little bit of the darker color in a few spots just to make sh give us a little bit darker areas to work with here and there. And then this mountain up here. 
kind of more green, so I'm going to go ahead and grab some green and add that with this. The closer to us, you're going to get more green, more realist, you know, more, less of that blue interfering with the color from the sky, so... You'll end up with some teals and then with uh, brighter greens as they get real close to us. some of this teal over here too. Just a couple spots. I will let that dry. I think we can probably go ahead and draw our hammock since it's not going to interfere with the sky much and our water is pretty much done. So, I'm trying to decide what pencil I want to use. Just need to make sure that my water and everything underneath here is dry. So my hammock is fitting in this area right here from between like right there to right about there, looks like. So I'm just going to angle down this way. I'm going to cut, cut it across and there's going to be a below the bottom part showing a little bit right there. I'm just going to curve all the way up into here. I'll just draw this kind of soft line there. Then we're going to go across a diagonal. Well, really, it's kind of more like along that horizon line now that I'm looking at it. And then a little bit farther away and come out. And it does this kind of, it kind of cups out this way, just slightly. And comes straight down in. And joins up with that. You cannot see this at all, can you? Not really. Okay. Let's use a different pencil. Let me see if I can use a different pencil. There we go. Okay. I think I... I'm going to change this line just a little bit. So come in a little bit more shallow here. Curve up. Right there. And go across. Kind of follow that horizon line there. We're going to put it above it, but I want to paint this in first, so just going to come just below it for now and then come a little farther away and then we're going to come out and this one is going to come it's going to go almost straight like if we did a straight line from here to here and then this part is going to belly out just a little bit and then come back in down low it actually comes in lower and I draw it right there it comes below that water line. I need to lower it just a little bit. Mm, yeah, let's do that. Let's just make it a little bit longer and lower. So I want the bottom of it to be right in here, like that. This line's 
here and then the bottom of the hammock we're seeing right here. It doesn't go down very far. This line continues up right here. And then this part of the hammock comes up and then bows out just a little bit right there before going back in. part back here so that this is thin right here and then our tree so if you did a straight line from here out and here out if you continue those lines then our line is going to come out this way up to our tree branch so it's going to be right in here Oh, I'm out of camera, huh? I took off a little of my paint right there. I have to add some ocean back in. So this should be dry now. I'm going to use the smaller Willow's Blender here and add my greens. So I'm going to use that green and I'm going to add the blue. A little bit of purpley, ultramarine blue. There you go. And then we'll use a little bit of white. Trying to get the right color here. Sorry. I think that's about right. Let's see. It goes on. Need to be a little bit lighter. Let's use that teal since it's got those colors in it. There we go. Tapping, tapping some of this light green on here. Use some of the yellow mixed with that green. Still got these other colors on my brush, so it's not too bright. bit more white here. There we go. There's a rock right here. I'm going to grab some cadmium yellow or a yellow oxide, I'm sorry, with this green here. This one's a little bit more Yellowish. Yeah, 
add some white. Tap, tap, tap. So these are small taps. I'm not pinching anything in solid here. Leaving a lot of that blue from underneath showing through. Okay. Grab some of that darker green, add it down here. Every now and then, kind of hit it with a pop of that brighter yellow green, just kind of, just a little bit of it. Okay, and this back side of the mountain is all dark, so I'm going to use yellow, blue, and the green, and just add that on that shadow side. Just add a little bit down here, too. Grab just straight the yellow, blue here. Doing okay, hon? I'm surviving. You need a snack? <laughs> nope, I'm saving room in my tummy. Oh, that's right. We're going out for dinner later. Mm hmm. And then this green along like here. I've got all kinds of colors in my brush, so they're all kind of coming off different strengths. Let's grab some of that brighter yellow green. This area here is much more of a yellow green, brighter look. Closer to us. And I'm just tapping and kind of pulling just a little bit in little circles. And it's going to create these kind of little, little bush shapes for me pretty easily. Grab some of that unbleached titanium. Right along here, there's 
Jerusalem Beach looks like. Just tap that in right there. Keep it really th thin though. You're not going to see much of it. There's a little bit over here too. And it's mixed with my green because I've got so much green and other colors on my brush. But that's good. Since it's far away, it's going to also get that be distorted a little bit. Alright, let's use this color on our mountain here. There's like a section that's peeking through. Right there and right here. Grab that burnt umber. A little bit of this color along the bottom. And I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. And then I want to create kind of tree shapes over the top of this brown. disappears back into that jungle there. I really could have probably just added and create that teal color and then add a little bit of that purple to it. Here. There's some dark contrast. I could have painted in this dark area before I did the bushes or when I did the mountain I just didn't see it until now I was there the whole time <laughs> like the ex expiration date hmm? like the expiration date yeah <laughs> this is a sky color here I'm going to use it to highlight this shadow side of the mountain yeah, Mark and I were trying to find the expiration date on something the other day. I don't remember what it was. Pasta, I think. Raviolis. And it was like literally on the front, like as big and bold as you could please. And like both of us were looking for it. For So I can't say anything about the painting you couldn't find the other day. Now you have you have a free pass for a lot more painting incidents now. Welcome to growing old. <laughs> well, if they hadn't made it so obvious, we would have noticed it right away. It was like right there. You know, they usually like print it so small and like obscure you can't find it. So we weren't expecting the like to be actually visible. Right where you could see it. <laughs> I've uh, got a little bit of purple, green, I like a little bit of these blues. Let's get some ultramarine blue here. Use a little bit of that. Oh, that's pretty. All right, almost done with this. Ultramarine blue here. It's adding it bright in some of these shadow spots. All right, I think we're pretty close. I'm going to add a little bit of
So spots to my mountain over here. This mountain is fairly light, dark, just in general. The whole thing is kind of in shadow, so there's not as much highlighting, but I do want to put a little bit of highlights. And then this one I'm going to add bright yellow green right in here. And just hit the tops of some of these trees back in here. Okay. I'm going to use a little bit of this color up in here too. How, how long are we now, honey? Oh, I'm about 5'11". <laughs> oh, time-wise. Oh, I'm sorry. How are one, we doing time-wise? One hour, 31 minutes, 42 seconds. Okay, so not bad. Not bad. Hour and a half. We're making good time. Mm -hmm. All right, so while I've got these greens, I'm going to just grab my filbert here. And use some of that. And this is the number four filbert, so it's a little bit smaller. I'm going to add this green back in here. Just zigzag it. Keep it down toward the bottom half, pretty much. You can go over the top of your whites or you can go kind of around them next to them, whatever you want to do. But just mainly keep them side to side. Let's grab some of that phthalo blue. Mix that with that green, so it kind of makes that turquoise color that we were working with back there. Add a little bit of water. This has got a little bit of white right here where I was working with the white, so. really dark down in here. There's some really dark areas. We'll be adding more of this lighter color in, so if you put too much of this, that's okay. We'll add some more of our white highlights back in here. I 
with a little bit of ultramarine blue. And some of that purple as well. And the purple you really want to be intentional because it's going to be really dark. So keep it. Very thin. You could use your angle brush for this if the if your filbert's not doing thin enough lines for you. This one's kind of borderline for me. Okay. And this is where you can kind of look at your sky and see if there's anything you want to change at this point because before we put on our tree that's time to do it so I think I'm happy with mine I'm gonna leave it uh, I don't really see anything that I want to change so I'm going to draw in my tree and it's going to go from right in here at an angle up here over my mountain and I kind of already have the branch here so I'm just going to kind of connect that to the tree trunk right in here and it's going up this way going up off the canvas there there's a branch that comes horizontal and then backs uh, this way kind of zigzags back on itself And continues up this way and then there's some branches coming down here that we don't even see where they start they're just falling down in here and then this tree trunk here where it kind of bends right here there's a branch that comes out down and then out this way and low and goes right up to this mountain here There's another one that angles down and does the same. Right there. Another one right here that comes down and then wiggles back up this way. And if you don't want to have to paint all or draw all these in, you can just paint them in when you get going. It's fine. A lot of times I do that with trees because I'd just rather not have to worry about the branches. These branches are pretty specific though, so I want to get this perspective right. So it gets very narrow here as it's going away from us. That's what gives it that look like it's getting farther away. And all these branches back out here are going to be smaller than the ones closer to the tree trunk. So these... The, f the closer to the this part we get, the bigger it, the branches are going to get. The farther out we go, they're going to get thinner and thinner and thinner. That'll be um, something really important to keep in mind. So this perspective here getting really, really thin, really fast. So going from this really thick tree branch to this really thin one right here is what's going to really give it that distance perspective. Okay, now there's a branch coming up this way actually comes up higher
thick and then right up here this other branch comes across and goes out this way strings come up across and go off across right here right there all right so I'm going to use fluid acrylic for the tree because it'll just make it a little bit easier to do the branches if you don't have fluid acrylics you can use your heavy body acrylics just to add a little bit of extra water to them but this will just make our tree branches go on a lot easier. Use yellow oxide, my burnt sienna. They don't make burnt umber in the fluids. I don't know why, but this is light burnt umber, so it's close as we get. And then Indian yellow hue, which was not on our list, was it? Or was it? Okay, well, we want it on here, so I'll add it. Sorry if you're just seeing this. You're like, that wasn't in there. Um, and then there's some green on the tree. Well, I can add the green in later. Okay, I don't need the, that color. All right, so let's use the, we'll use the angle brush for this. And the main part is just going to be this yellow oxide color to start with. Yellow oxide is a really good color to start with because it's opaque. So it'll cover really well over the top of all this other stuff that we've got going on. Some of that burnt sienna and use it down in here while this is wet. Grab that burnt umber and right in here where this branch overlaps this other one. Use that right in there. I'm coughing. Oh, okay. This is laughing. Ha, 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 ha. No, I thought coughing. you were coughing because you were <laughs> laughing. Uh, no, but uh, they would like to know, what is the orangey color that you put near the yellow oxide? This is Indian yellow hue. Grant. You may use a little bit of the thicker color right there just to cover that green of the mountain there. You may need a couple coats to get it to go on the way you need it. Need the burnt sienna here. Some branch kind of sticking out right there. It's broken off. Okay. <coughs> 
And let's use this in the water. It's really dark. And then it's going to be zigzagging right here underneath the thickest part of this right here. It kind of winds out where it touches the, where these branches go out. It, there's usually like a little wider area, at least on one side. Too, that'll help. Oh, I forgot to put the palm tree back there. Darn it. Well, we'll just go without the palm tree. You can't really see it in where it starts anyways. I don't think it matters. Do I want it? I don't know. I could probably do. Shoot. You know you want it. I know, I kinda do. I know, but but I already painted over it, so it's gonna be really hard to paint around it. But as long as we're not whispering, they will never know. <laughs> I meant to do that. Exactly. You were showing them what to do <laughs> if they forgot to put it in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's a pro tip. If you forgot to put in something, Andrew's <laughs> going to show you how to go back and put it in. Because <laughs> they totally, totally didn't on, forget. Totally on purpose. Okay, thank you, honey. Good, thanks. All right, so <laughs> we're just gonna pretend this tree's not here, and I'm gonna. I painted, uh, mixed in some burnt umber with my thalo green there to, to get this darker green color. Just go right over the top of your tree trunks. It's not gonna, you're not gonna be able to paint around it. It's not worth it. I can't believe I did that. No, I can, I can. It's not the worst thing that I've done, I guess. Live, I had to fix. It ain't no beach chair, that's for sure. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I'm not. 
speaking to you about the beach chair anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That was funny. Some brighter yellow here. This totally would be better if you did not have that tree in the way. <sighs> we want to get that dark shadow in there. That's the main thing. So I need to go in with some darker. This is just burnt umber here. doing them in all different directions because they're kind of overlapping each other there's you know they're not all just going in one direction Get my yellow oxide back in here and cover that all up. And I kind of caught it before it completely dried, so it's kind of just mixing into my yellow, which is good because I did want green in this tree anyways. Just make sure you don't do these too thick and leave a thick line through your tree because then you really will be messed up. Then you really will have a hard time covering it. So when I do these, I want to put them on kind of water, watered down green paint when you put those palm fronds on and that way they are. It's going to be easy to cover up. Let's use some of that green down here. Just patches on the... I think it's kind of a sycamore or something. It's got like these patchy spots. grab the number two round and use the yellow oxide and mix in some of the burnt light burnt umber or just burnt umber if you don't have these colors and tap in my line outside edge of my hammock and I'm tapping so it looks kind of woven did too straight of a line it wouldn't look realistic so just tap 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 this is that outside edge of my hammock
And tap, tap, tap along this edge. This is appropriate for Courtney's birthday since she, she and Jordan met on a cruise. My daughter-in-law's birthday today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Happy birthday to Courtney. I didn't plan it that way, but it's kind of funny that it turned out to be <laughs> a beach scene. Well, good thing it wasn't an Alaskan cruise. That's true. Then we would have been messed. It would have been a little more awkward. I guess they can have hammocks in Alaska, but... Probably not. Not, not as enjoyable. Cruise season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so grabbing some of that unbleached titanium. I grabbed that. I'm gonna grab like several colors on my brush here and just try to kind of load up with multiple colors so I have my brush kind of loaded thickly and do these little thin lines. Flatten my brush out so I get thinner lines here. There we go. So I'm just going to weave a basket here. <laughs> going to weave my little hammock. And if you want to, you can put your, there's lines that go this way. So we can do those. The starburst, which is going to come straight down. Oh. A little bit of unbleached titanium here, just put a little highlights on the top. Let's put a little bit of highlights on the edge of the rope there. This bottom part is really dark, so I'm going to grab that. Grab burnt umber here. Cena. These are pretty much solid down here. This top knot is kind of dark. I mean, there's a shadow along the bottom edge of this braided rope. Right there. Let's put the really dark shadow right here. And 
tree's dark enough now, or dry enough. We can put our shadow back in here now. off camera that whole time. Sorry. I didn't notice that was up far out close. Right, grabbing that burnt light burnt umber. Use it in the water right here. Those reflections kind of remind me of the uh, the rowboat. Yeah. Reflection. Yeah, very similar to that painting. Yep. Yeah, they did me too, for sure. Your stomach's growling. Can you hear it? Try to go fast. <laughs> I don't hear it with my headphones on, so I'm okay. <laughs> you just hear it. <laughs> it might have been my stomach. <laughs> okay. So we're coming out this way. What do you... I just saw a bag of cookies. Oh, we got cookies in here. I thought I had finished them all off. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sneaky little booger. They're hiding in here. I'll teach it a lesson later. <laughs> I'm going with our little basket. We got sidetracked. I'd rather go too light than too dark in here to start with, because then I can always go back in and shadow this in to darken it up if we need to. But if we want highlights to go back in, we'll have to paint those in individually. So, just go kind of a medium color, maybe a little bit lighter than we need for this area. Put our little basket lines, they're going in this direction. And as we get up here, they're kind of turning and going straight across up here.
probably need a smaller brush for this. This brush is a little bit too big. We'll keep on going here. If you want to get real technical, you can kind of go in between with your lines here. I'm not really, you want to go over the top of that, those lines that we did this way. So now I'm going in with a little bit darker color here. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. We'll let that dry, and then if we need to, we can add a little bit more of the darker color, but I'm happy with the start there. I'm going to add a little bit of the burnt umber shadowing right along here. Too wet. I forgot that that's in there. I, I'm not using my towel over here. I'm using it over here. I need to use it over here where you can see it. I forgot we had that in camera. A little burnt umber down here. Just below where... That rope line is. Or whatever this is made out of. Yeah, okay. Now I'm going to use black. Use a little bit of the burnt umber for this part of the rope. And just tap, tap, tap. Knots, there's kind of knots right here. And then there's these lines coming across. I'm not going to do my lines across yet, though, because I don't want to have to fight those later. So I'm going to do the... Ah, it's tangling down and attached to that branch right there. I just tied off on the branch. That's why that branch is sticking out right there. So I need to bring that branch out a little bit more. Makes sense now. Okay, let's do a little bit dark on this end right here. Boom. Whoop. That was a little bit too big. Again, there. I like it. It's looking good. Okay, let's keep on going here. Add some of this really dark color down in here in the water. Just mostly right underneath that hammock.
the rope on this side. Burnt umber and black. down a little bit it doesn't have to go all the way down as far I don't really think it adds anything to the composition so I'm just gonna let it hang down a little bit tap 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 so these rope lines are a lot easier to do than if you had to do like a straight line so We can all kind of connect the dots and just do these little dots, you know, next to one another. That's all you really have to do for this kind of rope. There we go. Oh, it's coming together. I like it. All right, so let's grab some of the yellow oxide and burnt umber mixture and I'm going to do our little branches. You can see how using this thinner paint really allows you to do much longer lines. It goes a lot farther. But I probably need a thinner brush. Because this brush is a little too thick. So I'll use it for some of, to start some of these, but then I'm gonna switch over to a smaller brush. What size brush you use? This is number two round, but I forgot that I was going to do these branches. So when I was introducing my brushes, I didn't include a liner brush, which you're going to need. So a little bit wider right there where it touches a tree. Comes down. Goes up. Horizontal for a little ways. Back down. Back up. It's these sharp branches that are coming straight down like this that make it um, look like they're farther away. So if you're, you know, kind of coming up with your own tree, it's these like this. This kind of S shape here is what makes those branches look like they're going that way. And making sure that you're making them thinner, obviously. But, uh It's kind of a neat little perspective. These ones come all the way out to here. Get them as small as I can, but 
You just need to make sure that you're making your branches. See, like that branch is thicker than this branch up here that is attached to, which would not be right. So I've got to make this branch thicker to match it. Here. At least it's thick. Okay. <clears throat> Let's use some of this Indian yellow hue. I'm just going to put it over this tree here. It's going to add that brighter. And do some burnt sienna here. Well, as you're uh, kind of putting in the finishing touches there. Mm -hmm. Time for my sales pitch. Okay. So we don't have to like give every detail about every level every time. Okay, I so think. just letting them know there's traceables and stuff available. You know? What she said. Extra stuff available. Check out patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. You can see about bonus videos and other and other extra stuff that we don't do for the public. Man, I couldn't have said it better than, than that. <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking our people that watch every time are probably tired of hearing the sales pitch. So. Also, thumbs up, like, <laughs> subscribe. Absolutely. Check out the channel. Lots and lots of paintings. Lots of fun things to do. Scroll to the bottom of the video there. You see all the supplies, links to brush guys. Get that and social media and all that good stuff done. Thank you. Good job, honey. Sorry I cut you short today. Mm -hmm. Your one job. Oh, no, you, you were waiting for me. You were... You're well, I peaceful. forgot to, to mention it to you. I was going to mention it to you. What did I do there? Got something all over that. You're too busy trying to do, I do put my, my job. Hand in the wet paint. Yeah, you're too busy trying to do my job. You aren't paying attention to yours. I know. Now I just took off half of my ocean right there. Man, I'm like the Julia Childs of painting, I think, sometimes. If you're younger, you probably don't know who she is, but she did a cooking show. She was always dropping things and messing up kind of how I feel sometimes when I'm doing this <laughs> it's pretty much normal for me <laughs> par for the course <laughs> I am too clumsy to be <laughs> very like this is there's a reason why I don't do like uh sketches you know like big drawings and things because I'm always putting my hand in stuff I know I was always frustrated because I would always have these big areas where my hand was, you know, 
making blurring everything I'd just drawn. All right, so I know that the, you can put paper down and there's things you can do, but I get excited and get into what I'm doing and I forget to do that. So. Okay, there we go. Trying to get the color close to my machine. There, and if it's really obvious, I can just kind of pull some of that color back out into, you know, a wider spot so it's not so obvious that I'm patching. There's a little bit of that umbrage taking in with the white. Right in there. I think there was some green too in that water, but we'll see. We might not. Might not need it. I hate it when I do that. It's a waste of time. Okay, now more of that black, hopefully. I won't put my hand in it this time, we'll see. And more of the yellow, or the branch there. It's sticking out. Well, I'm gonna use some of this color actually on the tree. Some of this green that I just made. Just teal and phthalo green and white, a little bit of yellow oxide. What It doesn't have to be the exact color, just get something close. And there is a knot right here. We'll grab some dark burnt umber, just kind of draw it in. There. Put some of this color up here. Let's put some on the branch up here. This is way too bright, but we'll darken it up here in a minute. I'm just trying to get the color on. A little bit of it down here. Okay. Just a little bit more yellow with this. In here, put some highlights on our tree. There's like parts of the tree are getting sunlight dappled through, so there's these spotty highlights happening. A little bit of it. All right, then I think I'm going to use the. I need to dip these brushes back in the water so they don't dry out on me before I get to wash them. Out. 
clean that out. Grab my The longer liners are actually better for um, let's see what I got here. Those are the same brush, okay. The ten aught liner. Yeah, I'm gonna use the darker color, I think. These smaller branches are kind of dark. Is that burnt umber? And you want to make sure when you're using a liner brush, especially one this fine, that you have lots of water on your brush. Because, or a very thin paint like I'm using. Because otherwise you're going to end up the paint won't come off your brush if it's if it's too thick it's just stick to it especially these liner brushes they just don't um, they won't flow there's too much I don't know what they're too floppy they won't push the paint down onto the canvas you have to really and then you'll end up getting thick lines because you'll be pushing harder than you need to to get these lines off your brush. So if you use a thin enough brush, you don't have to do that. You won't. It'll do the work for you. And you just kind of hold it like a pencil and just run it just the tip. And if you need to, you can uh, tilt your canvas so that your canvas, some people find it easier to paint lines in the direction that you're you know, would normally draw. So and I'm going to make sure that I do some that are coming straight down at us and so they look like they're going away from us. Keeping the lines thinner as they go toward the end of the branch. What how much time are we at now? Two hours, 28 hours. minutes. Okay. Well, that's good. I thought it was going to be about two and a half hours, so we're right on track. For some reason, this one seems like it's longer today. Maybe it's because we're thinking about food. <laughs> some, some videos, I kind of lose track of time. This one, I've just been like feeling every minute. You don't have to put as many branches as what you know is in our picture here. If you don't want to, you can just do as many or as few as you want. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Add just some shadows to the bottom of some of these. And there are some like little bud type looking things on some of these. So if you want to, you can kind of end some of the branches with these little like dots, things, but if you scatter a few little kind of random dots in amongst your branches, kind of makes it look like there's buds or something else growing there that, you know, it's not quite formed yet. The uh, the lightest blue on your palette. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the concoction you mixed up to get that? This one? Or the, this one? Yeah, that one, I think. That one was um, 
the teal plus a little bit of yellow oxide, I think, and white. Maybe a little bit of unbleached titanium. It was basically the uh, the phthalo blue, phthalo green, which is teal, plus whites and a little bit of yellow oxide to make it more green, more green if I needed to. So, but basically the teal color. The water was more teal. You know, that was the more teal. The the lighter blue that was in the sky was just phthalo blue and phthalo, uh, and then ultramarine blue. darker along this edge here. It's really not the right brush for blending in colors, but while I've got it here, I'm going to lay in some shadows on my branch here. A little bit darker color. I really probably need to use a glazing liquid. And get it more transparent. Come on, there we go. Get this most sort of cashmere out. Just banging on the door again. Grabbing a little bit of blue. To add to that yellow oxide for a shadow. Lots of glazing liquid. I think I might use a little bit of the burnt sienna too. Yeah, there we go. The shadow color will go in all of these shadow areas here. the angle brush, the smaller angle brush for this. It'll smooth it out better. And I'm just using some yellow oxide here to kind of transition between the dark shadows and the color on the tree. Use a little bit of that yellow oxide or the Indian yellow with the burnt sienna here on this part of the tree. Okay, getting there. And let's use this color right here, the shadow color that we made, that green plus Yellow oxide, I think. Put it through our this side of the tree here in some of these areas. Create these lines.
there's a little bit of burnt sienna in this area. And you honestly, you don't have to do this much detail in this part of the tree. If you don't want to, you can make it a little bit more simplified. Make it a little bit more complicated than it has to be, probably. Go a little bit more dark right there. This is burnt umber. Okay, just adding these layers of layers and layers upon layers. What are you thinking, hon? Okay. What? These artists, maybe I might put them in their quotes. Don't believe me. What? What's that light blue paint up in the upper row? This one? Yes. That's teal. That's cobalt teal. Boom. If I had a mic, oh wait, I do have a mic, but I'm not going to drop it. <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> they argue with you whether they think it was. <sighs> they are questioning my art knowledge. Like <laughs> you would not believe. <laughs> Poor honey. I mean, it's just so offensive. <laughs> I study and I study uh -huh. and I hone my craft. For all of what? Like an hour to a week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I take this serious, folks. Okay. <laughs> you made me laugh. I got a bit line thicker than I wanted it. Oh my gosh, that's funny. I mean, they should be doing that fake bowing motion towards me right now. All just right, because of my, my awesomeness. Because you were so right. Well, because I can read your supply list. <laughs> <laughs> you are amazing, honey. You but know, I already knew that. It, it, it's what I do. I, I, I bring it. I'm a professional <laughs> here. You know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You're too funny. You might be exaggerating that a week would be too much. I don't think that you've studied for a week. <laughs> well, you have been doing this with me, so maybe if you were paying attention at all, but I don't <laughs> think you have been, so. Off, off and on. Uh -huh. I mean, you know. Every well, now and then. Especially the po point where you say, hey, I'm off camera. <laughs> Then I really pay attention. Then you're paying attention. Yep. And then I doze off after that. <laughs> okay. Pretty much what I thought. Okay. Okay, so they want to know if the paintbrush is standing straight up in the water on its own. Oh, my gosh. That, that's because Angela is. Angela is is the paint whisperer. What the heck? How magician. is that doing that? Oh, I know what it is. It's the... It's the label. It's making it buoyant. This part is making it buoyant. Because you're magic. Mm -mm. No? You have Because I bet if I took that off, it wouldn't do it. The secret is out. She has her paintbrushes under a spell. That's hilarious. It, but it, I shouldn't have been living it in the water anyway. So it's like that Mickey that Mouse movie where all the mops come to life. I have a bad habit. You shouldn't do that.
All right, I think we're about ready to add some little uh, red leaves to our branches. Just making sure that I got all my branches in here that I wanted and the right color. If I need to darken or highlight or anything, right now is the time to do it. It's your own version of Fantasia. What is that brush standing yeah. up in the water? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, they're off camera right now. I mean, I'd zoom out, but you know, all the other brushes are kind of walking around in the background here in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> I actually watched Fantasia for the first time in years. Uh, I don't know, a couple of years ago. It was like, maybe it was last year. I don't remember. But, oh my gosh. I mean, the artists that worked on that are incredible. It was unreal, the amount of work that went into that thing and just how beautiful it, you know. And not just the Mickey part, but I'm talking about, like, the, there's, like, little fairies that turn into, the little daff, I think they're uh, dragonflies that turn into fairies that, I don't know. It was just incredible, the whole thing. If you haven't gotten a chance to watch it recently, I would suggest trying it again because you'll be blown away. All right, so I think I'm happy with that. And I don't I don't think I'm going to do a whole lot more with this. I'm going to maybe grab a little bit of the burnt umber and just go in here kind of in some of these creases and add some burnt umber just on the side that's touching that pole, you know, the, the lines that came down this way. Just right there, there's some shadows where these kind of tuck underneath some of those. So I think I'm just going to add a few, like, shadowed lines right in those areas. Not go all the way down, just a little bit. And this brush is going to give us much finer lines, too, which will be nice. A little bit more detail. People are concerned about the rope around the trunk. Oh, yes. Thank you. I do need to do that. Thank you. I would have forgotten. I left it off because I wanted to finish the tree. And then, what are you doing? I'm looking at the people in the water I just noticed. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to put those in. Kayakers or whatever. Okay, I'm just gonna. I don't think I'm, I'm. I don't think I'm gonna put those in. And creepily watch over your shoulder. Okay, nice. You gonna put that grass in too? Oh, um, yeah. I'm debating it. I don't. I don't know. I probably. Little highlight lines on my rope. <laughs> some of this yellow, Indian yellow here. Add some of that to my rope. Add a little bit of unbleached titanium to make it more opaque. There we go.
is adding a little bit of darker shadows under there too. And then I'm gonna grab this brush. I really like this brush for doing like random flower shapes. I'm gonna grab that cadmium red medium or cadmium red light and some quinacridone magenta to make it a little bit deeper, a little bit more cherry red color. And I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap. Gonna go straight down. Just gonna create these random shapes. perfect for our little blossoms. Oh, I love it. Yeah, looks good. Just that pop of red against that blue looks so pretty. And just slightly orangey so that it's like really good contrast because that orange is opposite of on the color wheel from the blues. So there's, you know, it's just a really perfect color to use with it. Looks really pretty with blues. Nice big one up there. Don't overdo it because the tendency would be to like cover the whole thing with it, but really don't need to. Just adding just a few, just like in our picture. a little bit of it down here in the water just little bits very very few but there is a little bit of that red being cast down in the water just a couple places and then it's also in our sand so I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt sienna just to tone it down but then there's very small little all in our sand down here under our hammock. Keep them small. I guess we can do some grass up here. I don't know. Some yellow oxide with that phthalo green added a little bit of the brighter brighter just put a little bit down here by our tree trunk and a little bit in the water reflected okay let's put a little bit of that green from up here back in the water down here A little bit of green here and there. I'm going to grab that teal color in my glazing liquid. I'm going to get more glazing liquid out here. I'm going to add that yellow oxide. And just the fluid stuff. Little shadows in my water here. And depending on how dark or light your water is back here, we're just going to add some of this color to add some ripples in our water all the way up here. They're going to get closer together and wider as they go closer to the bottom of the canvas or down lower. 
corner. I'm on top of my shadow areas over here to add that kind of luminous look. Since it's got the translucent colors and I'm using the um, glazing liquid, it's going to give it, it's going to go over the top of my colors and just add a little tint to it. It's not going to overwhelm it. For the love and creates that what for the love of all things true and just and noble, please what? don't forget to put the rope in. <laughs> you cannot believe what my eyeballs have seen in chat. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll do it right now. <laughs> Here we go. go up above the tree branch there, but curve it down around. That's awesome, honey. <laughs> the love of all that's holy. <laughs> Please, my God. <laughs> Don't forget the rope. If, if you love me, you would put the rope in. <laughs> right, right now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Awesome. There has been so much controversy over ropes and shadows and oh, now really? trees and water. It's oh no, what about the shadows? <laughs> Do I want to know? No? No. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, the tree is in the water. Okay. I am adding just a little bit of purple and quinacridone to the flower blossoms, just a tiny bit here and there, just to add a little bit darker shadows to that, to them. And then I'm gonna use the bright cadmium yellow, or cadmium red light, all on its own to add my highlights. It'll really pop. Using the, just the very tip of my brush to create these little random dabs. So now I'm curious about the controversy about the shadows. I was just trying to understand why the foreground was so dark and my explanation was is that there's a tree on the left side that's outside of the picture that oh. is casting shadow onto there. Also, there could be some clouds overhead that you don't see that are casting shadow in that area, like the clouds are casting shadows on the distant Yeah, mountains. I think it's just mainly this, this whole area's in shadow. There's trees, yeah, like you said, like the tree over here that's casting shadows this way. Or there's a submarine right underneath the water and you're just seeing the the top of it. Right. I think that's more plausible. I think that's what it is. I just paint what I see, so I don't know. I don't question why. <laughs> More up to, I'm not very... I'm not, not a very inquisitive person that way. I'm <laughs> pretty... Pretty much straightforward. When, mm -hmm. when this tutorial started, I had no idea it was going to be so controversial. I, I didn't. Uh, when we would do Bible study, I always hated when we did the prophecies because I never. I, I was like, just tell me what it says. I don't care what it might mean. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Like, I don't really care. I'm just going to paint what's there. <laughs> 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 you 
you all have the debate all day long. Good for you. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> it did not occur to me one time <laughs> to wonder that. That's so funny. <laughs> Now, if I was making this up on my own, I would have to, you know, sit and consider those kind of things. But since I'm just painting yeah. from a picture, I'm just... No, if you were doing you know, this on your own, there would just be flowers everywhere. You wouldn't even see the water. Let's be real. <laughs> Hashtag be real. <laughs> All right, I'm mixing my blues together and a little bit of purple. And I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to it. That'll make it a little bit more kind of greenish. I'm going to use a uh, yeah, nice and deep color there. I use this for my shadows and my area down here. Yeah, I have no idea why this area is darker, not really, honestly. I just think it's in shadow. That's it. I'm going to use a little bit of that glazing liquid with this. In here to just thin it out a little bit, make it a little bit lighter. wouldn't make a good theology student <laughs> or like what is, what is one of the jobs we have to think think of you know I don't answers know answers to questions I, I don't have a job that I have to think well yeah exactly it's, it's much much easier for me that way <laughs> to to do art <laughs> just paint what I see I don't have to think about it too much <laughs> it was always kind of tickled me when people would like ask me about my art in the gallery shows and stuff and be like so what does that represent I'm <laughs> just like well a flower it's a nest and it has eggs in it so it represents a bird uh, nest with eggs I don't know <laughs> like <laughs> We were like, well, does it symbolize? Mm, it's just pretty, I think. I don't know. Like, I never had an answer. I would always, you know, try to come up with some. I just thought it was pretty. That's all. I, that's the only reason I painted it. I do not have a deep meaning. I'm sorry. I'm not very deep, obviously. <laughs> Let's paint what's pretty. That's it. It's good enough for me. <laughs> we see it. We like it. We paint it. Exactly. <laughs> That's about as deep as we go. <laughs> it's about as hardcore as we go. Uh -huh. How is the oceans eroding away the sand by each gently lapping of the ocean? Is just how time it's is just gently wearing away. Right. Trans it's the impermanence of life. The rise the and fall of the salt air mm -hmm. upon the hammock <laughs> well I did figure out though I mean after you know I got enough questions about it I did start thinking okay why why is it that I'm drawn to certain subjects and that's easier to answer you know which I, I think is just the flowers especially is just because they were so rare when I was growing up they were just like this like wow like so special because I grew up in the desert and they just only showed up at you know like once a year Maybe in the summertime you'd come across like one little tiny flower on its own, you know, stuck somewhere. But uh, so I think that that's why for me they're just so magical because I, I just have such a fascination with them it's because I, they were, you know, special and they still are for me. So thankfully other people like to paint them too because it would be really weird if I was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I'd still paint them, though. <laughs> All right, I'm going with teal. A lot of white here. It's a little brighter color. 
And I'm going to go over the top of some of this that I've already done. Kind of add some bright highlights in here. We're almost done with this, so you don't have to do this if you, you know, if you still got this color in. I'm just adding it because I kind of covered up this whole all of my light out of this area in here. So I'm adding some light back in. And I'm going to add some down in here where I kind of lost all of it when I did that light and darker colors. So just zigzag through your darker colors, kind of go in between them. I don't think it's fair that you can just sit down and do your job uninterrupted for like three hours. <laughs> don't have. Hey, it's not only been in the last, you know, 10 years or so that I've been uninterrupted. Before that, I had little kids running in and out every time I tried to get anything done. So it's only fair that I have some, <laughs> some peace while I paint now. <laughs> Now it's just the cat interrupting me. <laughs> Unlike my job. Unlike your job where you have people coming in asking questions all day long every day. <laughs> and emails and phone calls. and. Oh, I have the emails. Trust me. I just ignore them. <laughs> See, there's, there's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> I do my emails like twice a week. Otherwise, they they get a little out of hand. So. Last week, I I went out went down to talk to somebody in a different department, and I only brought my personal cell phone. I didn't bring my work cell phone. Yeah. And uh, I come walking back, and I go to talk to my my boss, and mm -hmm. and uh, he was in his office. So I turn, I start headed back, and he comes walking around the corner, and he's like, "Ah, there you are, Mr. Anderson." Because I tried calling you, but then your phone was ringing on your... He goes, I, I went to see you, and you weren't in your office, so I tried calling you, and your phone was ringing on your desk. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oops, yeah, sorry. Yeah. When the big boss looks for you, have your phone with you. Check. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I'm the big boss, so I don't have to worry about anybody. <laughs> Yeah, I know. When I call, you don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, you don't either, so there. Well, true. <laughs> true that. No, I keep my ringer off all day, pretty much. Although, I do check it every now and then, but I hardly ever answer my phone anymore. Okay, just adding more blues. Oh, it's looking so pretty. All right, we're getting there. Almost done, really. Just trying to, if there's anything else that we need to add. Um, I feel like there's a little bit more of this brighter blue green color. Here. I'm going to put it in pretty bright and then I'm going to 
glaze over it. Gonna put in some shapes. there. Okay, I definitely don't see red petals on the beach in the picture. I think you went a little extreme there. They're right here. Oh, okay. Right there. Need some glazing liquid with my brown. Got some white in it, and I'm gonna put in some of those shadows back in here on my beach sand from the tree with a little bit more brownish color. Yeah, just a little bit of <coughs> something right there. this white just add highlights all in my water here You can use zinc white for this if you don't want it as bright. Be more subtle. And really, you can stop at any point in the water that you're just happy with it, so you don't have to do it. I'm trying to, I don't know why I'm still messing with mine. It, it looks fine. Here, I'm just going to glaze with a little bit of the phthalo blue and the glazing liquid. Over the top of some of this water here. Kind of just tone it all, tone it all down a little bit, unify the color scheme a little bit. So I'm going to use a little bit of the green shadow color again here and there, and I'm going to call that good. Did I miss anything? I think we're good. Put our bright petals here. I could probably have... Actually, I see something on this branch here. What brush are you using there? This, this is a liner brush. Which one were you just using? The angle brush. Angle brush with the water kit. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I'm gonna call that good. I'm gonna sign it and use my pen here. And which pen is that? The Pigma Sakura. There's the name, Pigma Sakura, S-A-K-U-R-A. All right. I didn't think I was going to survive that chat today. <laughs> Whew. All right. <laughs> so thank you for everybody out there watching us today. Poor Mark. I don't know. I don't pay you enough. I know. I don't it, pay you at all. It was rough. But <laughs> <laughs> thanks to the super chatters. So we had three today. Uh, first nice. one was from Laura. And she says, thank you for providing such great tutorials and great diversity. It is raises the quality of our learning experience. Awesome, awesome as always. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Laura. And then the second one was from Sin, and she says, "Love it. Been missing live shows, but it's still, but still watching and painting. You two rock." Oh, uh-huh. thank you, Sin. And then Sandy says, "Been having some health issues. Missing all of all y'all." Hope to be back in action soon. I watch your videos these days to make me happy. Oh, Thanks good. for that. Oh, thank awesome. you, Sandy. That's great. Yeah, thank you. Hope you feel better soon. Mm-hmm. All right. That's a wrap. There's a wrap. Yeah, we've got our finished painting. Hope you try it. It's a lot of fun. A lot of li- different layers to it, but what, how long did it take us in the end? Three hours, 13 minutes. Ooh, wow. So it went a little over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not surprising, though. <laughs> hey, it's it's better to do it like that and do it complete and it, show them all the little yeah. details because it comes out amazing. It could have been s- simplified down here a little bit. I kind of mm-hmm. got carried away with it. But anyhow, yeah, I think it turned out fun. So I hope you try it. And if you do, you can share it with me on the social media. I've got all the links down in the description. Click on the show more. If you want to see my other videos, you can click on my name or my photograph uh, under the video here. And that will take you to my channel. And I've got all kinds of fun Stuff for Valentine's coming up next week. Uh, all kinds of, I think Tuesday night we're doing a romantic couple. Silhouette, yeah. Silhouette. So that'll be fun. Um, and uh, yeah. So and next weekend, what are we doing next weekend? Ooh, the window box with the flowers. Ooh. I'm looking forward to that one. It'll be fun. It's got my favorite colors in it. Teal. <laughs> teal and pink red. So pretty similar to this one, actually. <laughs> There's a theme this month. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time, guys. Thanks. Bye.